I do not want to make this video, but considering the amount of requests that I've got, I will oblige to it. Well, what's going on in Afghanistan? And why did big, big powers, and especially the United Nations, UNO, United Nations Organization, fail? Or at least they have failed in the last uh, 20, 25 years. Who knows? Maybe they may be successful in the future, but it doesn't seem that they will be. Uh, to control the situation in Afghanistan, well, what's going on and why does it happen that all the time the United Nations fails, right? So now, before we get into uh, the specifics, we have to understand that this is not a video where I'm criticizing the UN. Uh, it has accomplished great tasks indeed. So all appreciations for the good work that the UN has been doing and is doing today and will also do in the future. But there's something fundamental that we are missing here. There is actually no United Nations. There is no UN. So when we say that the UN has failed, it doesn't mean that the UN has failed. It means, uh, what, what actually I mean to say is that there was never a United Nations. Now you may say, oh, but then we have a big group, right? Uh, like they're making so many decisions, policies on. Uh, the thing is, you have to understand uh, what does it mean when somebody says, you know, uh, all right, uh, we have a United Nations. Uh, earlier there was, you know, League of Nations. But all these organizations fail to uh, bring peace at the least. This is uh, where, or at least in the major parts, well, like, for example, Afghanistan. It's like mayhem is going on there. So they may be uh, able to uh, bring peace in some part of the world and when some disturbance is there that they might be able to do. But whenever there is a major crisis, why is the UN failing always? Why is still there wars in the 21st century? Everybody knows where the boundaries are, right? <laughs> Deep down inside, everybody knows, right? But then why are still there wars, right? So the reason is very simple because there is no United Nations. So what is this UNO, United Nations Organization? The current day UN that we see is largely a monopoly of the most powerful nations of this world. But that doesn't mean they are united. They were never united because all of the nations all of the big powers of the United Nations, they, they have a history of exploitation. Any country you take, let's talk of the Security Council, the P5, you know, permanent members. You know, that, that may vary on uh, some country might have some more, some country might have less. But if you take the example of uh, USA, right? Oh, why US? Let's start with Great Britain, right? <laughs> British Empire. So we all know what the British did to India. Bengal famine, artificially created famine, right? Millions and millions of people murdered. Bengalis were on the verge of death, right? By the great Winston Churchill. And these things are not documented uh, in British history books. The children are not taught. It's there somewhere, but it's not taught to their children. Winston Churchill is portrayed as this great, uh, as this great personality who gave uh, you know, victory to the British in the World War II. And then you have so many. You can go to their history and see what, what not, what all crappy things that the British did uh, to their colonial, uh, to their colonies, you know, especially to India how much they looted, right? Then we have China. We, we, we have seen what China has done in so many parts of the world, right? 
are to the Uyghur Muslims and so many Xinjiang province and, and the way it has been it, it has been behaving. Then we have Russia, needless to say, so many, right? And then United States of America, also needless. So all these organizations, France, well, we don't hear much, but if you go to their history, maybe you'll also find. So every organization there, I'm not talking of the Security Council, but overall, all the organizations, they have one common agenda. It is their own selfish self-interest. So therefore, the current United Nations is, it's like a group, it's like a bunch of people together sitting and pretending that we have, you know, some bigger cause or something, but there is no bigger cause that they have. The only cause that they have, now you may say, oh, but then they have climate change, you know, they are thinking big, you know, they are thinking for the future. Why? Because they, if they don't think now, they will also get destroyed, right? So it may, it may appear that the UN is like doing so many big things and you know they are thinking so much big. But then there's a fundamental problem. The problem is they they have every country has their own set of agendas in mind. And therefore, depending on the geopolitical situation, um, they act accordingly, right? So, for example, uh, when the there was India-Pakistan war in 1971. Then there was a resolution to be passed in the Security Council and Russia had used its veto power and blocked that, right? Now, why did Russia do that? Because as a friendly gesture to India, right? But if there is something similar today, will Russia do that? Maybe it will, maybe it, it, it may not, right? So uh, the thing is um, that every country, depending on their own profit and loss, is going to act in a particular way within the United Nations. So therefore, currently, from last 20 years, this war has been uh, going on since the 9-11 attacks in the World Trade Center. Now, whether it is good, it's bad, was it ethical, moral to have this war on, that's another debate. That's not the topic for today. It's the topic for some other time. But the thing is, uh, we have to understand that USA has now withdrawn the troops, right? At the end, there are no troops. <laughs> Why? Because now, for many years, like even the current president, uh, Joe Biden, and even before him, Donald Trump, he, both of them, and gradually even, you know, if you go back, Obama also, Barack Obama also, so all of them have, you know, gradually tried to pull them because it costs a lot of money, resources, right? So now, whether it's been done, it was done in a good way, dignified way or not, you know, that's the topic of some other day. But the thing is, why was this done? Because they have had it enough. They have had enough of all this. So now, it's like saying, okay, um, I'm not get, getting anything out of here. Why should I waste my resources here, right? Which is perfectly legitimate. If you see from a, a survival perspective, why should a country spend billions and trillions unnecessarily? Why, 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 right? Now, keeping that debate aside, there's one thing which we need to understand. The United Nations talks of universal brotherhood, right? Always universal brotherhood. Depending on that, they have uh, formed, you know, like the Human Rights Commission. So many, uh, so many organizations within the UN. Yes, but the thing is, you got to understand how can two people be brothers if they do not have the same father, right? How? It's not possible. Because you, you may say, "Oh, he's like my brother," you know, right? A man may say, oh, this person is like my brother. Or a lady may say, oh, this person is like my brother, right? But if at all you really want to have universal brotherhood, then you really need to understand this one fundamental idea of universal fatherhood. There cannot be brothers without a father, right? Which means you have to accept that you have a common father. And who is that? 
God Himself. God is there with you all the time. Just look to Him and you will find Him. Because if you do not accept this idea that you you have one common origin, then then why should we behave like brothers? Why, right? Why? Why should I waste my resources for you? Why? Yes, that's perfectly legitimate, right? Considering material circumstances, material uh, principles, yes, perfectly. If you have no business, get out of that country, right? Why should I deal with the mess? That's your country. It's Afghanistan. Why should US be dealing with it? So, if you see from a materialistic perspective, it's perfectly the best thing that US did, right? All right. Uh, it was like uh, too much for us, and now we're getting on. But the problem with this is they were only thinking of themselves. They were not thinking of what will happen to the people of Afghanistan because they think people or the government or the president, whoever you call them, they think that yes, my like the president of the US, whoever he is, Joe Biden, Donald Trump, George Bush, Clinton, or Obama, they think their duty is to protect the citizens of USA, to protect US as a US as a country, you know, protect the dignity, virtues, you know, the borders, the army, the economy, right? Why? Because they think. US is everything. Similarly, India. India thinks, oh, India is everything. Pakistan thinks, Pakistan is everything, right? Russia thinks, Russia is everything. So, now Afghanistan has become like this, you know, a uh, place of competition for, you know, geopolitical interests. Some people are saying openly, like China has said, that we are going to talk to the Taliban. Russia is doing so many things underground. India has not very clearly stated its position so will it talk to the taliban or will it not yes so the thing is every country is thinking of its own selfish interest because they they are convinced that they should be the superpower so usa thinks yes americans should be at the top Russians think, yes, Russians should be at the top. Chinese think that China should be at the top, right? And same is with India, and same is with Pakistan, is right? Any country. So, therefore, imagine this world. That is why I have had this, I'm having this behind, you know. <laughs> imagine every country is like a center, right? And you try to draw circles, that all the circles will intersect each other, and that's conflict. That is geopolitics, basically, right? Conflict of interests. Will I help this country? If I help this country, will my agenda be fulfilled, right? But the thing is, imagine there is only one center, and you are drawing circles. They are all concentric circles, which means that there is no intersection. That means there is no clash, right? Imagine. Now, what is that center? Is that center a particular religion or particular country or particular ideology or particular political party or particular uh, personality? No. It has nothing to do with all these material circumstances. That one center around which you can draw unlimited circles and there will never be a clash is none other than God himself, right? So if everybody understands this, they have this spiritual awareness that I am not the enjoyer, controller and proprietor. As Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Bhuktaram yagya tapasam sarva loka maheshwaram suridam sarva bhutanam gyatva maam shantim ruchati. Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Bhuktaram yagya tapasam. I am the beneficiary of all the sacrifices, yagyas, tapastyas, you know, all the austerities. I'm the con enjoyer, controller, and proprietor. You see, he's telling this. And he's also the most well-wishing friend. Suridam Sarva Bhutana, the best well-wishing friend that you can get. Gyatva Mam Shantim Ruchati, one who understands this attains Shanti, peace. That's peace. Until and unless the leaders of the world 
and people in general understand that yes god is the ultimate proprietor if you if you have if you have a gold mine in your country it doesn't mean that this is your property right of course you may use it because of you know international laws or something like that. but the attitude should be that yes this is in my country but i am only a caretaker of this gold but this gold actually belongs to god as it is said in the vedic scriptures that uh the nature is producing flowers why so that you can cut them and you can go and offer them into the lotus feet of god it's not that you can put it uh, in your home and you know you can just keep smelling them or seeing them that's not the reason the reason flowers exist is so that they can be offered as a uh, as a bhoga to god that's the reason right why 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 is there water so that it can be offered to god everything in this world is meant to be offered to god which is bhoga and when god accepts it he gives it back that's known as prasad yes many people in india unfortunately don't know the difference between bhoga and prasad they say oh i am eating bhoga no you are not eating bhoga if you are eating bhoga that's a disaster because bhoga is only meant for god you can only accept prasad so the thing is till the time the world leaders and the world in general is having this narrow minded consciousness of me being the president of a country or prime minister or the chancellor or the dictator until the time people think that yes this is my land and i will enjoy i will go with because see the enjoy mentality is here right it's there within the heart and then that expands a man thinks oh no, i have a good profession you know i have a good wife i have good children i have good i have a good car i have a good house i have a good salary i have a good bank balance i have a good i have good connections right then he plans to expand his career you know and become a politician sometimes and have more followers right so either you are a man or a woman or a boy or a girl whatever you are right yeah. young old teenage right senior citizen you have to understand that you are here for a temporary time right even if you may declare yourself as a dictator or president for life you may do that there are so many people who have done it oh yeah i'm president for life now i've declared myself right but the thing is you will only be president even if you declare yourself president or prime minister for life you will only be there till the time you are in this body the moment you leave this body nobody gives a damn about you nobody cares for you right so the thing is you have to understand that your identity is linked to this body which means today you may be a millionaire but the moment this body dies i mean you leave this body then you don't exist anymore right for the people around you you die you perish you leave that's why they say he left she left right <laughs> so the thing is you have to understand that temporarily i may be the leader of a country or a state or a district or a continent or maybe the world like for example we have the illustrious example of dharmraj yudhishthir who was the king of the entire world after the battle of kurukshetra but he was the most religious and spiritually aware king to have ever lived in india right we have the example of dhruva maharaj we have the example of ambarish we have the example of prithu maharaj these are like perfect kings ruling the entire world maybe i even enter universe sometimes you <laughs> know and then still offering everything that they have to god right so the moment when yudhishthir maharaj got the news that lord krishna has left this world he took mon bhav and then he started walking towards the himalayas right he did not say oh yeah anyways he was god you know <laughs> is gone but after all i am i am the king now you see how does it matter where is krishna right now of course uh, we we need not uh, do what he did 
because he's a very exemplary person and you know the pandavas draupadi everybody followed him of course these are extraordinary personalities what they have done nobody can ever do and what they have tolerated nobody can ever tolerate but the thing is at our level we can enlighten ourselves spiritually by that we will realize that yes these things are there but these are all temporary you see i am the president of a country like in us there's four term a four year term then you can get another term right back to back or maybe later but you can't get more than that right so the thing is maybe the limit is different maybe in the future and for different countries it's different but the thing is you have to understand that whoever you are you you are it engineer you are a doctor you are a dancer you are a singer you are a chef whoever you are or a youtuber or an astrologer you have some uh, some control for a limited amount of time but this world existed when i was not there and this world will continue to exist even when i am not there there was no usa maybe 100000 years back but then the world still existed right there was no russia there was no china but the world existed right the thing is and the world will always exist okay exist at least if you compare with the term of a president or prime minister the world will continue to exist of course of course there is pralaya and there is destruction but the thing continues okay so the more we have this self centric consciousness consciousness of you know everything is mine you know i have to like enjoy this i have to do this i have to do that till that time you will only be focused with your country right like uh, why, why why different countries even within countries sometimes you know the states are fighting recently in northeast india there was a big conflict between you know two states i will not take names so the thing is um, and then within states there are conflicts within districts right yes because my father and my grandfather had been from a very senior bureaucrat uh, background so i have distinctly seen all of these conflicts within assam you know the conflicts within districts sometimes you have conflicts you know assam nagaland assam mizoram assam what not then you have india pakistan conflict then you have you know us and uh, taliban or us afghanistan conflict right so these will always keep happening if you become self centric all right so therefore the only way we can actually help not only afghanistan you want to elevate poverty or whatever you want anything any good thing that you want to achieve in this world for the mass public you have to understand that you have to elevate yourself and everybody else spiritually gradually when you elevate yourself then there is compassion karuna is there inside right then you will feel for the suffering of others otherwise you will feel oh my life is good you know i should have bother or worry about what's happening with others right so therefore whenever you can wherever you can with whomever you can try to elevate each other spiritually right read the bhagavad gita the shrimad bhagavatam the bible the quran and by that you will under authorized uh, tradition and an authorized guru of course not just go and hear anybody right that can lead to more misconceptions right so therefore uh, try to find an authorized guru under whom you can learn right and then you can preach the message of god which by whichever religion you are inspired okay and then when people understand that yes my job is not just to save the people of india or america or russia or china only then one day hopefully god willing that day comes when there is actually a united nations organization otherwise it is just an illusion okay now that's very frequently seen within the un right any anything the un does or any country does which hurts the interests of any other country they will immediately back off or they will speak against it okay So that will be all from my side thank you very much